This is Inside Heavy. Richard Christie from the Howard Stern Show has created a heavy metal group that he calls the Charred Walls of the Dam. The band is full of heavyweights, including Tim Ripper Owens from Judas Priest fame. Richard Christie has stopped by Inside Heavy to give us all the backstory into the development of Charred Walls of the Dam. They got a new CD coming out February 2nd, and Richard Christie is going to tell us all about it. So don't go anywhere. We're coming back with Richard Christie from Charred Walls of the Dam. Hey, Inside Heavy has got your gear. We have created a shop where you can buy everything you need to display your favorite heavy metal band on your back. We you looking for hats, t-shirts, patches, body jewelry, whatever. We got it in our heavy metal gear shop. Powered by Amazon.com. Check it out. With Richard Christie from Charred Walls of the Damned, right here on Inside Heavy. We got Richard Christie on the phone with us uh, from a new, new group coming out, Charred Walls of the Damned. Uh, a lot of people probably know him from the Howard Stern Show, but he's a he's a meddler too. Richard, welcome to Inside Heavy. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. Hey, tell us about Charred Walls of the Damned. I've listened to, to what Metal Blade Records have sent me, and uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, tell us about it. Well, thank you very much. That makes me very excited to hear that, that you enjoy it. And uh, it's just a band that I put together. I pretty much came up with the concept of the band about two years ago. Um, I've been playing guitar since 1992 and always, you know, kind of had guitar on the back burner. I mostly focused on drums and uh, just played a little guitar here and there to write some riffs. And in the past five and a half years, I've lived here in New York City and I, I've been picking the guitar up a lot more. And, and about two or three years ago, I finally felt confident enough in in my guitar playing that i decided i'd love to write a metal album and record it and uh you know just do it pretty much for fun and for my love of metal and and to get back in the studio because i've really been itching to to do something again in in the metal scene it's uh it's been five and a half years now since i was on my last tour with iced earth and also recorded an album with them so mm -hmm. it's metal is definitely a passion of mine and it's something that never goes away and i just uh you know finally two or three years ago i was thinking well with my schedule at the howard stern show i don't really have a lot of time to dedicate to a band that that would go out and tour for a month at a time or go go into the studio and have to record a month right in a row so i figured the best thing to do with my schedule is just uh create my own band where i could decide the scheduling i could decide what you know if we want to do some shows uh i could break up the recording time a little bit so maybe we'd record uh while we have a two week vacation on the stern show and then go back in the studio when we have another week vacation and and so i decided to do my own thing just uh just because of that and also because i had written a lot of guitar riffs and, and eventually a lot of songs in the in the past uh two or three years and and, and it was just basically uh, for my love of metal and wanting to get back in the scene. And, and, and also, I've been good friends with my guitar player, Jason Sukoff, mm -hmm. for about 10 years now. We've always talked about putting together a music project, and he's become very busy as a, a producer and pretty well known as a producer for bands like All That Remains and Trivium and, and mm -hmm. Black Dahlia Murder. And... And I would, you know, I always wanted to show people how much of a, an amazing guitar player he is. He's a, really a guitar shredder and also a great songwriter. So right. I figured this was a per perfect opportunity for Jason and I to to get together and finally do some music that we've been talking about doing for ten years. And he also runs Audio Hammer Studios, which is an amazing studio in Florida. And uh, I actually lived there for a while in uh, the year two thousand when I had a a fire at my storage unit where I was living at the time in Florida. So I moved in with Jason for a little while and even helped lay the uh, parquet flooring in the drum room. So right. I always tell any drummers that recorded Jason's studio, they got me to thank for the, the nice wood flooring in right. there. But, uh, 
Yeah, so there was a lot of factors that really made me want to do this band. And, uh, you know, just I guess it all boils down to just the fact that I love to write music. I love writing riffs, uh, both on the guitar and I love writing drum beats too and mm -hmm. i still practice drums about an hour a day and i had tons of uh pretty crazy drum beats that i was writing guitar riffs around and uh just decided to kind of put it all together absolutely well it sounds like you had a good team to work on and jason is uh world renowned as a, as a producer he's working on as you said, more and more stuff. Um, and I didn't know that he was a guitar player, quite frankly. I mean, you have to assume that someone who's in music like that knows how to play, but not that good. Uh, yeah, he's, he's incredible. I met him when he was probably 19 or 20 years old. I met him outside of a show at the Brass Mug where my band Burning Inside was playing. And he came up to me and he was a big fan of uh, of Death and he knew that I had played in Death and he wanted to, to play me his band's demo. And his brother, who I think was like 14 or 15 at the time, was playing drums on this demo and the band was called Caffernum. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away when I heard it. I was like, wow. And, uh, and ever since, I, I knew that Jason was really talented and, and he lived lived near me in Orlando and we just became very good friends. He's a really, really funny guy. He's such a character, mm -hmm. uh, which you'll be able to see on the, the making of the charred walls of the damned album, uh, DVD that comes out with the CD. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Jason's just a lot of fun to hang out with and also a super, super talented guy. So, uh, yeah, I'm psyched that, that now people will hopefully recognize him, uh, as much as a guitar player as they do for a producer. <laughs> Is this the first album that he's actually played guitar on, or has he been other uh, things like that? He's actually done a lot of guest leads on on a lot of the albums uh, that he's produced. I'm not exactly sure which ones. I think he did a guest lead on the newest job for a cowboy, and um, and I know he's done quite a bit of that. And he also had another band, like a comedy band called Crotch Duster, which is <laughs> a pretty popular underground band. A lot of people ask me about them because. I did a little intro for one of their songs where I just said something goofy about, you know, holding a, a Richard Christie beer fest, or I can't even remember what the hell I said on it, but but uh, Jason plays guitar on that, and it's just the most incredible, crazy guitar playing. It's like Mr. Bungle type stuff, and so he's definitely done a lot, but um, since he's pretty much just had his hand in, in producing in the last several years and become very popular at that. Um, he ha I don't think he's had as much time to to really play guitar and, and do recording of his own playing. So sure. now I'm psyched that, that people get to hear how amazing he is. Sure. And aside from that, you got an amazing vocalist. you got Tim Ripper Owens of Judas Priest fame. How'd that come to, to be? Well, I've been friends with Tim since he joined the band Iced Earth, uh, which I also played in. Mm -hmm. And Tim is just a hilarious guy. He's got an awesome sense of humor. He's, he's a really funny guy, and we got along great on tour. And, and every night on tour with Iced Earth, he just sounded incredible. Uh, he never had a bad night. His voice is always just in perfect condition. And, sure. and I knew that if I was able to get Tim as a singer, that not only is he a super cool guy, guy and we'd have a blast in the studio but but also he'd be able to go in and really pound out these songs and and just do an amazing job in a, in a short amount of time um, because unfortunately because of my um, vacation schedule with with the stern show we had limited uh, studio time so we had to record uh, fairly quickly and tim did all the vocals for the album i think in like four and a half or five days 